Good evening and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, excellent event that uh, is not the first time, but uh, we strongly believe that it's going to be continuous because uh, it is extremely important. I'm Lisa Panagiotopoulos, and as you can see, I'm the treasurer, I'm a member of the executive committee and uh, chair of the Innovation, Education, and Entrepreneurship uh, Committee. Today, we are going, going to discuss an extremely important subject, supporting innovation, with two very distinguished, very prominent ladies, but uh, they, are, they are international. They are going to join us all the way from the US, but these special ladies have a Greek uh, origin, and they are Mrs. Marina Hatsopoulos and Mrs. Sofia Kabanis. I am really extremely happy and honored that I had to discuss uh, with both of them. Good evening, ladies. Nice and welcome. And Thank it's you. very, very nice uh, to, to just discuss for this extremely important subject. Uh, we have uh, a bit of short time. I wish we had about a couple of hours at least. Just the three of us, we can, can examine everything. And uh, in order to shorten my speech time, I just have to say that uh, what we're going to discuss is the ways of supporting innovation. And if we can, to present some existing solutions, the main subject, is uh, the network uh, networking assets which uh, develop the relationship between individuals, firms, and institutions, and have the potential to generate, sharpen, and accelerate the advancement of innovative ideas and the materialization of these ideas. We are going to run this wonderful 20 minutes in about three rounds, and uh, we are trying to get the most benefit of our excellent uh, ladies. So the first uh, round of questions, actually they are not typical questions on the subject, and they are, how does the Hellenic Innovation Network empower startups from Greece and Cyprus with a bridge to the US, and how are you helping Greek startups to expand and increase employment opportunities in Greece? Furthermore, how your network amplifies the digital reach of your work as well as the work of other stakeholders active in the Greek tech ecosystem by sharing information about events, startups, and innovators in the community inclusive to anyone and agnostic to any organization. And how you support, you support and assist small and medium-sized innovators grow and thrive. The floor is yours. You have about, I'm afraid, and I'm sorry to say, four, something like that minutes. And I think, Marina, you can start. Okay. That sounds great. <laughs> okay, and uh, Marina is well known because we've been, uh, and uh, Sophia as well, we are judges in different startups. Or, uh, uh, organizations, etc. So, I'm starting with uh, Marina. I didn't try to say anything about your background, about your CV. There is on, on uh, we have uh, it is uh, presented in order to just uh, benefit of the time. The floor is yours. Thank you. Great. So um, I'm a recovering entrepreneur uh, from Boston. And um, what I wanted to start with is a context here. When we look at startups, they tend to cluster. Most of the venture funding is very concentrated in a few hubs around the world. In the US, this is San Francisco, New York, and Boston, which attracts the large majority of venture capital investments. Each of these startup hubs have particular components which help foster innovation and entrepreneurship. These are 
First, they're all grounded by a strong university and research center sort of global hub. So this is where research and innovation is developed and student talent is developed. Um, and all of these are really core to developing a startup hub. Also, many of these educational institutions will have entrepreneurial programs. A second component of a startup hub is the culture, where it's okay to fail, it's okay to break the norm, there's a sense of urgency, a global view, uh, people with big dreams, and a lot of collaboration and teamwork. A third component of these startup hubs is access to funding. So as I mentioned, there's tremendous venture capital available, but there's also angel investment available at the very earliest stage. These hubs also have incubators, accelerators, and co-working spaces, which help to foster entrepreneurship. And they are filled with other startups. So this gives entrepreneurs the opportunity to share information with their fellow entrepreneurs. And successful entrepreneurs become aspirational for others. After they exit, they create and invest in other startups, creating a virtuous cycle. Also, these startup hubs have large enterprise, and this is very important because these large organizations train employees on best practices, which they can then later use in their startups. These large companies can be early customers as well as strategic investors for the startup. Experienced corporate executives make strong startup mentors, advisors, and board members for the startup. So each hub has these components that I just mentioned, but they also have their own specialty, which results from the local expertise, as well as the local culture, the politics, and the cost of living. For example, Boston is a hub for life science, and Kendall Square is often called the most innovative square mile on the planet, due to the fact that there are 35 colleges, including MIT and Harvard, with 152,000 students and the highest concentration of millennials in the country with over one third aged 20 to 34. We have seven teaching hospitals and 2,000 startups with almost 1,000 biotech startups, uh, biotech companies and 62 public companies in Cambridge, mostly in biotech. So, but just to give you some context, in 1994, when we founded Z Corporation out of MIT and grew it to become an early leader in 3D printing, Kendall Square wasn't far ahead of where Athens and Thessaloniki are today. It was really, there was just not that much happening there. Today, it's the most expensive real estate in the country. So you can see how far things can go in not that long a period. Greece has developed early startup hubs in Athens, Thessaloniki, and elsewhere with access to funding, co-working spaces, and incubators and accelerators such as MIT Enterprise Forum Greece and the Ed. These entrepreneurs have global aspirations and they need a connection to global markets. So in order to support the Greek ecosystem, a group of us created a network of Greeks in the tech startup diaspora to build a bridge for Greek startups. The Hellenic Innovation Network has a mission to accelerate technological innovation and entrepreneurship in Greece to fuel the economy and job creation. As an outgrowth of MIT Enterprise Forum Greece, Hellenic Innovation Network was created with the support of the Consulate General of Greece in Boston to facilitate access to resources, partners, and best practices by building a bridge between the diaspora in global tech hubs and the Greek tech community. So what we do is we disseminate startup news, we broadcast educational webcasts, we organize monthly CEO group meetings, and we host in-person pitching and networking events. Greeks have always thrived outside of Greece, so we're hoping that by building a bridge from Greece to the well-developed startup ecosystems elsewhere, that we can help Greek entrepreneurs to thrive within Greece as well. So check it out in, um, at hellenic.org. Thanks. Marina, that is excellent. I mean, the, your timing and all this information and uh, out of experience, I know how much all the Greek uh, startups, they just uh, appreciate the support they're getting and especially from Boston. I think you are very much uh, aware of that. And if we support innovation and all this, I think that's the only way, not only Greece, 
but uh, the whole continent to just uh, uh, getting better and better and have a new way of living and new ways of uh, adjusting to different things. And let's switch to Sofia. Sofia, now the floor is yours. Welcome and thank you very much. It's a thank great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Kalispera Thessaloniki. Um, I'm honored to be with you today. I'm um, the president and executive director of the Massachusetts Innovation Network. Our uh, flagship program, the New England Innovation Awards, was uh, established in 1986. It is the oldest running innovation competition in New England. And it has evolved from a one night affair for five, six companies 35 years ago to a program that receives about 150 applications uh, from companies based in the six New England states, but happy to report that every year we see so many founders from all over the world. And there has not been a year that I have not felt happy to see at least one Greek startup among these companies. We follow innovation in that we um, tailor make our innovation tracks every year to, um, to see and go with the changes of innovative practices. And our key component and our key belief is that different entities need to come together to fully support uh, innovative startups. We do not charge anything to them, not even an application cost. And we work with a number of different organizations in and out of the country to make that happen. Our network being a network of about 2,500 companies that have gone through the program uh, through the years and about 240 that have won the awards is a very solid network to come back and support the startups. So we host a number of programs, educational, um, informational, and exchange of information focused to bring together, which I believe is our most interesting uh, components, people who are attempting to solve problems. And these problems are not within the boundaries of one country. They happen no matter where you are in the world. And the great thing about education is that it is not linear. It happens randomly. It is not contained in boxes. And that's the beauty of it. So while the pandemic hit, we were very happy to see a burst of innovation. And yes, Boston is very well known for the medical um, and life sciences startups. But what we've seen in the last year and a half is that other areas that were not that prominent came about and they're really flourishing. So last year and this year, we saw an enormous amount of AI and robotics teams come together and many blue tech teams, especially from Europe. So because of COVID, we were asked to innovate ourselves. And what the New England Innovation Awards program does in the New England area for the eight months of the year, usually from beginning of March to mid uh, November, we were asked to offer it to companies incoming the US market. So for the first time this March, we hosted an inaugural uh, Global Innovation Showcase and we broadcasted it through all the different partners we have, whether that be uh, incubators, accelerators operating here and abroad, uh, business partners and innovation partners 
uh, laboratories that bring about innovation in all the countries that we work with. So we were happy to welcome four starters, 11 startups, primarily from Europe, but also from Asia too, and representing eight different countries. The amazing thing to me as a born and raised Greek is that four of these startups that operated in parts of Europe other than Greece were born and raised in Greece. Whether they left Greece during the brain drain or before that, like myself, I can't say, but I can say that these are some brilliant thought leaders, some brilliant scientists who always think of how to make things better in Greece too. So though the startups we currently work with are trying to launch US operations and they're based in the UK, in Switzerland, in Sweden and in France, they have a second hub in Athens, a second office, some employees in Athens. And I'm also very happy to report that they cooperate because at the end of the day, many people are trying to address the same challenges. So if these people come together, then the result is more viable, it's more effective, it's cost reducing. So the way we see it, innovation is global, but innovation is also a cooperation. And much like in nature, for any ecosystem to be successful, it has to operate as one system. And with that, I will thank you again for having me and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Sophia. That was excellent. And what you mentioned, that uh, the pandemic created, of course, was a catastrophe, but at the same time was a great opportunity because a lot of things happened. Even the way we are communicating right now is due to the pandemic. Otherwise, yes. you had to, to flew to Greece and that yes. was going to be not so easy. And um, with uh, the same way, the uh, Greek startups ecosystem grew up and got much, much bigger and much more uh, uh, promising. And I hope next time that you're going to have innovators from Greece to your portfolio as well. Now I have a question that is a bit uh, different than what you usually do. Uh, but um, I will try to just uh, buy your points of view on that system. And that uh, is not only for Greece, but can be for your experiences, yes. And the question is, which features you believe make the structural differences in institutions and innovation networks and remain invariant and necessary between decades and how knowledgeable about such features can be employed in policy at the national and regional level and how innovation networks can be set up quickly and agilely to meet current innovation challenges. In other words, if you believe that in any system, in any country, there are some of these features existing or there is not or what they are have changed and if they, it is necessary to be there in order to provide. It has nothing, I mean, I'm not asking you if you know that they are existing in the Greek uh, uh, system, but just uh, if that is your feeling in general. It's a, a quick answer there, and um, feel easy to answer that question if you can. Sure. Um, Marina? Do you want to start, Marina? It's okay, go ahead. Okay. I can't really... I can't, uh, Sophia, okay. Okay. Um, for me, it's really uh, difficult to address this as far as Greece is concerned. What 
I see here and I see that in the last maybe couple of years, two and a half, is that there is an emphasis on, for many organizations, on trying to democratize um, innovation to happen outside the big um, metro Boston area. Like Marina said, it is a very expensive real estate. If there is a bootstrap uh, startup, they, they cannot necessarily afford that real estate. So we're trying to help innovation that happens in different corners in Massachusetts by working together with state universities and with state funded innovators and um, entrepreneurs that serve within incubators primarily and uh, accelerators to a second degree to make it easy for them. But I believe no matter where you are in the world, and I can't imagine that Greece is different in that respect, is you need to have people willing to support. And for those who can't make it to the big centers or um, sometimes we even see it in technical schools that do not have all the tools in their disposition that uh, graduates of big technological universities uh, have is to be able to support them in what they need. And I don't think there is one size fitting all. Every single one of the startups, you have to see it as an entity, see what it needs and connect it to the sources that can provide that no matter where they are. Thank you very much, Sofia. Marina, do you agree? You have something to add? Because um, we, we have two more rounds and a few minutes, but we have to cover because they are very hot subjects. So I have yeah, to no, I mean, the only thing I would add is that policy can really help support it. And the current Greek government has done a great job as introdu in introducing legislation for stock options and other um, incentives to promote entrepreneurship. But there are still, you know, things to be done in terms of uh, the justice system and lowering taxes. Um, you know, all of that will continue to help foster entrepreneurship. So great strides so far, and there's still um, work to do. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to skip my third uh, round of questions, which was very, very uh, important because I was going to ask you if uh, startups are better to be close to the capital cities or anywhere in around the country, because uh, they just informing me that we have only three, four minutes remaining. And I like to very much to go to my very serious closing question, which is uh, Greece offer contemplates adding business administration teaching to schools at the secondary level. Does the experience from other countries provide ample proof that this leads to increase the level of entre entrepreneurship? And if so, what is the ideal age for someone to be introduced to be to be introduced? Sorry about that. Uh, to be um, to be introduced to such concepts. I think this is a very important uh, question. We know the system of the junior achievement is existing in Greece, and I was one of the founders and I'm the honorary pro uh, chairman now, years ago. So I know that we are trying to introduce that from the second, uh, from the first level. But uh, what is your experience? And uh, I'll, Sophia, this time I will turn to, my, to Marina first. Of course. Sure. Okay. So um, I don't think business administration per se is that useful at the secondary level, but I think what is very useful is a culture of creativity, problem solving, teamwork, and entrepreneurship at even the youngest ages. So that means working in groups, practice at leadership, coming up with a creative out-of-the-box solution to problems, 
And this can be done in many different classes like chemistry, physics, biology, math, social science. It doesn't need a class of its own. It's really a mindset and it's an approach, seeing the opportunity and taking risks and not a specific curriculum like accounting or finance. And I just want to add in light of um, the discussion before on policy, one thing that the Greek, current Greek governments have done so well is to bring this mindset of entrepreneurship to the government, um, this idea of problem solving and creative thinking. So that's my quick answer. Thank you so much, and this is important. Sophia? Um, we, we, think think that that we finished, but uh, we need to have your, uh, your answer, definitely. We have been following research that the sooner you bring creative thinking and even product pitching within even sometimes the elementary school system, uh, not necessarily as part of the curriculum, although we see some curriculum focused groups like the Steve Jobs uh, School in the Netherlands or the Green School in Bali, um, we have seen the impact of thinking outside the box or thinking about selling your product okay. very strongly correlated to entrepreneurial jobs. Actually, uh, we are working with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on a pilot project funded by the government to bring this program, an eight month pilot that we are currently execute, executing mm -hmm. to elementary schools in blue collar working areas and measure the impact. So hopefully nine months from now, I will be able to share the results, but I have to say it's very well embraced and, and the children are very engaged in it. Thank you so much. I extremely appreciate and I hope that we did pass a lot of information. And uh, believe me, we're going to meet again with more time and uh, just examine all this. Have a nice day. Thank you so much indeed. And uh, thank you, the Amcham, for all this uh, event. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.